a major prophetic event just happened, and hardly anyone in the United States is talking about it. In recent years, a group of Western Christians known as Bonnet Israel has been working with officials from the Temple Institute to search for a perfect red heifer. The red heifer is necessary if temple sacrifices are to be reinstituted, but one hasn't been seen in Israel for more than 2,000 years. This is something that I've talked about a few times over the years because it directly relates to end times prophecies. For a long time, the search for a perfect red heifer seemed to be going nowhere, but now, all of that has changed. On September 15, five perfect red heifers from the United States landed at Ben Gurion Airport. The following comes from the official website of the Temple Institute. On Thursday, September 15, 2022, 5 p.m., five perfect unblemished red heifers arrived in Israel from the USA. A modest ceremony was held at the unloading bay of the cargo terminal at Ben Gurion Airport, where the new arrivals were greeted and speeches were made by the incredible people who have put their hearts and souls and means into making this historic prophetic day become a reality it would be difficult to overstate the prophetic importance of this event. In Numbers 19 1-10, we read about the very first time that the ashes of a red heifer were used. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord hath commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. And ye shall give her unto Eleazar the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, and one shall slay her before his face. And Eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with his finger, and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. And one shall burn the heifer in his sight, her skin, and her flesh, and her blood, with her dung, shall he burn. And the priest shall take cedar wood, and hyssop, and scarlet, and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. Then the priest shall wash his clothes, and he shall bathe his flesh in water, and afterward, he shall come into the camp, and the priest shall be unclean until the even. And he that burneth her, shall wash his clothes in water, and bathe his flesh in water, and shall be unclean until the even. And a man that is clean, shall gather up the ashes of the heifer, and lay them up without the camp in a clean place, and it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for a water of separation it is a purification for sin. And he that gathereth the ashes of the heifer, shall wash his clothes, and be unclean until the even. And it shall be unto the children of Israel, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among them, for a statute forever. For ages, we have been told, that the ashes of a red heifer would be required, before temple sacrifices could be resumed in Jerusalem. And a few Jewish sources are even suggesting that some ancient practices could be resumed even before a new temple is constructed now that they have these red heifers. According to rabbis and leaders in the Orthodox community, these heifers could be used to reinstate many of the practices of the Jewish temple in Jerusalem even before the third temple is rebuilt. Could it be possible that a tabernacle could be set up during the time that a new temple is being built? That is certainly something to think about. In any event, the stage is being set for the time when the Antichrist will step in and cause sacrifices to cease halfway through the tribulation period. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The reason why it has been so difficult to locate an acceptable red heifer until just recently is because the requirements are so strict. First of all, an acceptable red heifer had to be unblemished. But here in the Western world, we tag the ears of calves when they are born, and the tagging creates a blemish. Fortunately, there was a rancher in Texas that was aware of this requirement and did not tag the ears of his calves when red heifers were born. In addition, according to Jewish tradition, more than two non-red hairs would disqualify a calf. There have been times when a calf is born 100% red, but then develops black or white hairs as it grows older. So that is a problem. To determine whether a heifer is acceptable or not, a rabbi literally goes over every inch with a magnifying glass. 
There are other requirements as well, but there is one in particular that I want to mention. The red heifers that were delivered to Israel are all between 5 and 8 months old. But according to Jewish tradition, they must be 2 years and 1 day old to be used in a red heifer ceremony. So, they will be raised in Israel until they reach the appropriate age. And that also means that the clock is ticking. It will be some time in 2024 when these 5 red heifers reach the key age, and they must be used then, or they won't be able to be used at all. That means that it is very very likely that we will actually see a red heifer ceremony in Israel in 2024 for the first time in more than 2000 years. And I think that it is very interesting that these red heifers have arrived in Israel just as Jewish leaders are preparing for the beginning of a new Shemitah cycle. According to Jewish tradition, a new seven-year Shemitah cycle will start at sundown on September 25th. At that moment, literally the entire nation of Israel will shut down as Rosh Hashanah begins. Will this be the Shemitah cycle when we see sacrifices in Jerusalem resume once again? If so, will this also be the Shemitah cycle when the Antichrist steps in and puts an end to those sacrifices? It should also be noted that we are also waiting for the discovery of the Ark of the Covenant to be announced. And I think that it is likely that such an announcement could take place on or around a major biblical festival. The Ark has been silently waiting under Jerusalem all these years, and once Jewish officials announce that it has been discovered, that will greatly accelerate the need for either a tabernacle or a temple to house it. Meanwhile, tensions continue to rise on the Temple Mount, and Israeli officials are anticipating that there will be more violence during the upcoming holidays. The leading security official from Israel's National Security Council said on Thursday that the Hamas terror group, which has strengthened its foothold in Jerusalem in recent years, is attempting to spark a major conflict on the Temple Mount, which could escalate into a Widdescale conflict. There are constant efforts by Hamas and other terror groups to escalate tensions and create a narrative that Al-Aqsa Mosque located on the Temple Mount is in danger and to turn Jerusalem into an explosive detonator, Ail Hulada, the head of the NSC, said during a conference at the International Institute for Counter-Terrorism, or ICT, in Herzliya. Bilada's warning comes after Israeli intelligence officials recommended that Prime Minister Yair Lapid raise the country's terror alert level to the highest tier possible ahead of the upcoming Jewish holidays. We live in such interesting times, and I have a feeling that they will only get even more interesting in the days ahead. I will definitely be on high alert during the biblical festivals this year, and I believe that we should all be watching Israel very closely. So much is happening all at once, and I believe that many prophecies will now start to be fulfilled in rapid succession. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this. They have done a lot for us all. And thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.